not said some of these random facts might be the same facts as my other random facts video so um yeah i'm sorry if that's the case but i'm gonna read some random facts guys so uh get comfortable uh wherever you are whether you're sat down laid in bed just chilling wherever you, wh wherever you are whatever you're doing you know i hope this is nice and relaxing for you so i'm just gonna uh, go ahead and read these out guys so um i'm gonna do after i'm going to do say um i'm gonna see how long it takes me to do 30 facts so 30 30 30 facts um yeah so the first fact well i'm gonna see how, how long i've got because i don't want this video to be like the problem is guys is at the moment i haven't got super fast into there so you know it just it takes forever to upload videos and even like when they hit the 20 minute mark that's when they get you know really really frustrating because if it's under 10 minutes it's uploaded within say five but yeah once i get better into that i can make longer uh, videos but enough for that guys because this isn't a rambling video this is a random facts video so let's get started the heads on easter island have bodies so there's a fact, uh, there's a fact, guys, and then a little bit more information explaining that fact. The iconic stone heads protruding from the ground on Easter Island are familiar to most, but many don't realise what lies beneath the surface. In the tens, archaeologists studying the hundreds of stone st statues on the Pacific Island excavated two of the figures, revealing full torsos, which means as high as the... Which as high as three, 33 feet. Um, I've said this before, guys, in my facts video, a lot of these articles do have a lot of um, grammar and sort of, uh, you know, um, what's the phrase I'm looking for? Structure, stru you know, the sentences aren't structured properly, so um, I do uh, I do apologise for that. So yeah, they're, they're 33 feet high. Goosebumps are meant to ward off predators. It says, why do we get goosebumps in this psychological reaction? Small muscles attached to individual body hairs contract, which leads the hair to stand on end. We inherited this ability from our ancestors in part as a way for our brackets then coat of body hair to capture air beneath it and retain heat. But as George A. Bobinek, a psychologist and professor of zoology at the University of Gulf in Ontario, Canada, explained to Scientific American, it also caused our ancestors to appear. Sorry guys, I, th I think uh, if you haven't seen my video about my mouse problems, uh, um, we had mice, but long story short, we've still got one in the living room. And every now and again, I think I can hear him, but he keeps changing places. So I just want to catch him in the act, basically. And uh, you know, on a, I need to basically capture him and put him outside. So yeah, sorry guys. So yeah, it says it, it also caused our ancestors to appear bigger than they were, helping to ward off predators when they were frightened or on the defense. With modern humans having less body hair, goosebumps no longer causes us to look that much more intimidating. There's no such thing as pear cider. Um, my mum used to drink that quite a bit, but, well, she, she's not an alcoholic, but when she does go for a drink, you know, pear cider was always the preferred choice. It says, wait. You're probably thinking, I had a pear cider last week. Actually, cider is an alcoholic beverage made from fermented apples and only apples. Alcoholic beverages can be made from pears, but the drink is known as pere. Or pere. The drink was popular in England for centuries, but fell out of favour during the second half of the 20th century. That turned around in the 1990s when the drink was replaced, was rebranded as pear cider. So why don't they just call it Perry Cider? 
Oh, is it? Obviously, they want to state the obvious that it's pear cider. Pineapple works as a natural meat tenderizer. The fruit is packed with the enzyme bromelain, which breaks down protein chains, making it ideal, making it an ideal marinade for meats when you don't have a lot of time. But for the same reason, pineapple does not work for jams or jellies since the enzyme breaks down gelatin as well. The bromelain is so strong that pineapple processors have to wear protective gloves otherwise over time the enzyme eats away at the skin on their face and hands leaving dry and small sores if you need a pick me up oh sorry guys there's always like something like at the end of every quote like um you know read this or read that so yeah humans are the only animals that blush i have i used to have a massive problem i still do with blushing guys i get really really embarrassed it's not normal um, I know people with, with problems that have got chronic blushing, it's called. It's really not nice for me personally. I've been battling chronic blushing for years, um, since my, since I was a teen, and it just hurts so much, you know, that feeling of going bright red, and it, it pains, you know, it's like a, like a stabbing pain, you know, in my face, but, yeah. It's not nice, guys, it's not cute, it hurts, you know. Um, just Google the, uh, the condition, you know, chronic blushing, and, um, yeah, I was always a shy kid, but, yeah. We also, we are also believed to be the only human animal that feels embarrassment, a complicated emotion requiring understanding others, emo opinions and other factors. Charles Darwin called blushing the most peculiar and most human of all expressions, while Mark Twain said, man is the only animal that blushes or needs to. The feeling of getting lost inside a mall is known as the Guren transfer or Guren G R U E N. We've all heard how casinos are designed to deliberately disorientate visitors, causing them to lose track of time and where exactly they are. But did you know that there's a similar strategy behind the design of shopping malls as well? Officially known as the Guren transfer, this phenomenon was named after Austrian architect Victor Guren, who identified how an intentionally confusing layout could lead to customers spending more time and money in an approach in a shopping venue. Now guys, I don't believe that. I think what they just mean is malls are just designed to be nice places, you know, shopping centres are designed to be nice places that are designed to appealing to keep you there, you know. So, if you've got a nice looking sort of interesting store, you're more likely to, to go in it, aren't you, and shop. Yeah. The wood frog can hold its pee for up to eight months. Talk about having to go. Wood frogs in Alaska have been known to hold their urine for up to eight months, sticking it out through the region's long winters before relieving themselves once temperature increases. The urine actually helps keep animals. The urine actually helps keep the animal alive, while it hibernates with special microbes in their gut that recycle the the waste into nitrogen oh so that's that frog that sort of gets frozen with the winter in it and then it sort of defrosts i think anyway the hottest place ever ever recorded is uh, was in libya specifically the hottest spot ever recorded is el azia uh, a Z I Z I A in Libya, where a temperature of 136 degrees Fahrenheit was recorded on, Sept on September 13, 1922. Um, you, your nostrils work one at a time. When we breathe in and out of out of your nose during the day, one one nostril does more of the work at a time, with the duty switching every several hours. This nasal pattern is dictated by the same auto autonomic nervous system that regulates heart rate, digestion and other unconscious bodily functions, and is the reason why when our nose gets stuffed up, it does so one nostril at a time. That's so true guys, when you've got a cold you just spend a lot of your time uh, wishing you know you, you took your um your unblocked nose for granted. Only 
only two of my most like spicy feuds. Uh, feuds, food. Sorry guys, it's been ages since I've had to like read stuff out aloud. So I'm sorry guys if I don't have a uh, a good reading voice. I'm sorry if it sounds a bit robotic. I'm trying my best, guys. I just never had much of a call for reading stuff out loud. So I hope it's nice, relaxing for you. But yeah, so uh, only uh, only two mammals like spicy food: humans and the tree shrew. While humans have had the rare distinction of being the only mammal that actually enjoys spicy food. That list has seen a new addition as a study by Chinese researchers found the tree shrews have a mutation in their iron channel receptor TRPV1, which makes it less sensitive to the hot chemical in chili peppers. As a result, the adorable critters happily gobbled up corn pellets laced with capsaicin. The compounds that gives peppers their spice while other mammals in the study avoided them that's not nice though is it guys to deliberately give animals spicy food like you know that's a bit of a dick move a chef's uh, is it toki contains 100 volts so is the chef's that most diners are too busy looking at their food to look all the closely at what they i'm pretty sure guys it represents all the ways to cook an egg. I'm not sure. So yeah, so it says most diners are too busy looking at their food to look all that closely at what the preparer is wearing. But the toki, the traditional hat worn by chefs, actually contains exactly 100 volts. This is not just a nice round number. It is said that these volts represent the... Oh, here we go, guys. I knew I was right. Um, so it represents the number of ways to cook an egg. Though an investigation by Bon Appetit failed to track down where that saying originated. I could count like maybe, maybe like six ways to do an egg, but after that I'm lost. The M in m and m stands for Moores and Murray. I've actually been to m and m World Guys in London. That would be Forrest, Moores and Bruno Murray. The two businessmen who created the candy coat of chocolates. The two actually had a very continuous relationship as Mars leveraged Murray out of his 20% share in the company in 1949, years before M&M's would become the best-selling candy in the US, paying him just one million for a share of business that would be quickly uh, paying him just one million for a share of business that would quickly be worth billions that's how the rich stay rich though in it guys, they shaft other people, they con people but yeah the human body literally glows. It might be hard to see with your naked eye, but everyone you pass by every day is this is literally glowing. The human body emits a small quantity of visible light. Visible in the technical sense, the illumination is about one thousand times less intense than levels of light that would that would actually be able to see. That we would actually be able to see. Researchers in Japan used a special camera to track this glow and found that it fluctuates throughout the day with the body emitting its lowest levels of light around 10 a.m. and highest at around 4 p.m. a rhythm the scientists attribute to the change in one's metabolism sometimes i wish uh, sometimes i wonder guys if these facts are actually true you know like just because something shows up doesn't mean you know that um, some people might see something and explain it as one thing when it's not true they might just be interpreting it as something else but yeah they, they, some, some facts are very strange Cop copper copper doorknobs are self disinfected I always t um, wipe my doorknobs down you know because obviously everything that you touch on a daily basis needs disinfecting Copper and its alloys such as brass have long been popular Ma materials for manufacturing doorknobs. It turns out that this may not just be because the metal's hue makes it look nice. In fact, the material has found to, k to kill bacteria, according to one study from the National College of Kathmandu in Nepal. The metal iron denature protein of the target cells by binding to 
reactive groups resulting in their uh, precipitation and inactivation the high affinity of why do they all have to get technical guys why don't they why don't they just say that, um, the brass kills bacteria and as a result you're going to have a nice clean door handle they're done the high affinity of cellular bloatings for the metallic ions resulting in the death of cells due to cumulative effects of the iron within the cells in other words brass sterilizes the bacteria that can build up from all those potentially unwashed hands that grip it why didn't they just say that guys it's much easier cotton candy was invented by dentist we call it candy floss here guys it is not known whether william morrison had an ulterior motive for inventing the soft confection but the dentist no doubt helped ensure others in his profession continued drawing in plenty of customers. In 1897, he partnered with candy maker John C. Wharton to develop the cotton candy machine, which at the time was known as the Fairy Floss, and it's been bringing, it's been bringing kids cavities ever since. It's been absolutely years since I've had candy floss. Mary Curie is the only person to earn a Nobel Prize in two different sciences. The pioneering researcher won the Nobel Prize in Physics in 1903, shared with her husband for her study of spontaneous radiation, and then won the Nobel Prize in Chemistry in 1911 for her work in radioactivity. We have the uh, Mary Curie um, charity here in the UK which looks after uh, cancer patients they're called Mary Curie nurses so they're basically people who comfort and help people to um, I think it's called Mary Curie nurses anyway but they help you know comfort people and support people going through cancer treatment so the symbol for them is the daffodil or yellow you know uh, where I think it's a yellow ribbon but I definitely know it's a daffodil so yeah it says um, that makes her one of just six recipients to receive multiple Nobel Prizes and the only person to receive it in two different sciences. Chemical Engineering, Linus Paulding, earned a Nobel Chemistry Prize and Nobel Peace Prize, but all other multiple winners received theirs in the same category. Fingernails don't grow after you die. Despite what you may have seen on other lists of random trivia, your fingernails and hair do not, in, do not, in fact, continue to grow after you die. To grow, they must have, they must have, a, these must have a steady supply of glucose, which is cut off after the heart stops beating, preventing any further growth. In fact, the skin around the hair follicles and nails dehydrate after death and partly retracts, which can make them appear longer. Okay guys, five more, including this one. The English word with the most definition is set, with the most definition, sorry, is set. According to Guinness World Records, set has the largest number of meanings of any word in the English language, with 430 different senses listed in 1989 edition of second edition of the oxford english dictionary the word sets the record with an entering entry no no sorry guys after i'm after i've been reading for a while words get mixed up so it says four and three different senses listed in the 1989 edition of second edition of the oxford english dictionary the word sets the record with an entry running 60,000 words or 326,000 characters and no other English word has come close since. I absolutely love um, the rock band um, Clearwater. Credence Clearwater. Credence Clearwater revival has the most number two billboard hits without ever hitting number one. John Fox
Fogarty Swamp Rock Band has the odd distinction of having seen more of its singles hit number two on the charts without ever hitting number one than any other musical act between March 1969 and October 1970. The band scored five number two singles on the Billboard Top 100. Proud Mary, Bad Moon Rising, Awesome Song, Green River and Travelling Band and Looking Out My Back Door but never saw one of its songs get to the top spot. No other act has topped this dubious honour since. Pigeons can tell the difference between a painting by Monet and Picasso. Of course they can, guys. <laughs> They're just making this up, aren't they? They must be. In 1995, a study published in the Journal of Experimental Analysis of Behaviour, researchers reported being able to train pigeons to discriminate between paintings by Claude Monet and Pablo Picasso when shown slides of their works that they had previously never seen before. When the Picasso images were in inverted, the little art connoisseurs could still tell it was a Picasso. Maybe that's why they like landing on the statue so much. Nah, nah guys, nah, they don't even tell you what they did or how they reacted, whether they had a different reaction. How could they tell, you know? The dot over the lowercase i or j is known as a title. Some people used to do like hots, you know, above their eyes, you know, when we when were in primary school, you know. Some people used to like do a little heart above the I. That tiny dot above the lowercase I and J letters has an actual name, title. It is thought that the phrase to a T is actually de derived from the phrase to a title, a phrase that was used in the same sense dating back to the early 17th century. The first recording of the phrase is in the 1607 play woman later by Francis. Mum and John Fletcher, in which the line reads, I'll quote him to a title. Chewing gum boosts concentration. I can't wait to do a gum chewing video, guys. Next time you are having trouble focusing, you might want to reach for a stick of gum. A 2013, oh, a 2013 study in the British Journal of Psychology found that those sub subjects who chew gum while taking part in a memory challenge were able to stay focused for longer periods of time than those who did not chew gum. Three more guys. Superman didn't always fly. The original comic book Superman could leap tall buildings in a single bound, but then he had to come then he had to come right back down. Because he didn't fly, it wasn't until the nineteen forties when animators for a new animated series decided it would be too difficult to routinely draw him bending his knees that it was decided that Superman could take off into the air. Readers got to see smooth animation and a new superhero gained a new power. <sighs> this is quite a long quote guys. It looks like quite a, a really hot to... to uh, to, no, I'm not going to do that one guys. It looks too boring. Ah, here we go, guys. The longest wedding veil was the same length of, as 63 and a half football fields. When when Maria Paras, Parasveska, now Parakeva, or Parakeva, a woman from Cyprus got married in August 2018. Her goal wasn't just to say, I do, she was also determined to set a record. She quotes, my dream as a child has always been to break the Guinness World Record title for the longest wedding veil. She explained she fulfilled her dream by wearing a lace veil that stretched 22,843 feet and 2.11 two and uh, two two inches or as long as 63.5 football fields. Okay, one more guys. There's a picture of a unicorn, so it must be a unicorn fact. The unicorn is a national animal of Scotland. I didn't know that, guys. I know the Scottish flag is um, red and white, so it's uh, red and white, what am I on about? I told you, didn't I, guys, in another video. I mean to say stuff, but it just comes out wrong. It's blue with a white cross. 
else, but I'm pretty sure like the Scot. Uh, I always thought the Scottish national animal was like the, the island cow, but it's a unicorn. It says why? It says while Scotland proudly boasts the Loch Ness monster, one of the world's most famous fable creatures, the country opted to make another mythical beast its national animal, the unicorn. Although this might seem like an odd choice, Visit Scotland explains that unicorns played an integral role in the country's history. Back in the 12th century, William I used the proud beast in the Scotland's, in the Scottish royal coat of arms. Okay guys, so that's been another Random Facts video. I hope you've enjoyed. Please, please, please smash the subscribe button if you haven't already done so. Thanks for all the support, guys, and sticking with my videos. I hope to all, uh, I hope to, um, I hope you'll all join me for another video again soon. And yeah, please like the video if you if you liked it. Um, yeah. As always, guys, it's been a pleasure. Um, take care of yourselves. Um, yeah. This is Shadow ASMR. Over.